My boy J. Smith in the building, man. You ain't no assistant coach. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you know, Louisiana native, man. Appreciate you coming on Fan View, dog. Uh, I know y'all just coming back from Costa Rica, Costa Rica man. man. Oh, and I want to tell you, man, happy belated birthday. You know, you're Leo not, season, baby. Look, you're not, it, Leo season. Season. Look, you're not you're not getting older, man. You're getting wiser, man. Appreciate you coming on, man. Let me know how the Costa Rica trip went. You know, what you're seeing from your players, man, and, and how y'all was able to, you know, build that team chemistry over there. Um, the Costa Rica trip went went great. It was a, a great opportunity for this group that we have. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have eight guys returning from last year's team, but a lot of those guys are having to step into different roles. Being that you know we lost some guys, some big time scores from last season, uh, along with the transfers and the freshmen that we have in. So this group being able to get five ga game game like reps with each other, uh, the trip was perfect for us this year. That's big time, coach. This this that boy for it. Listen, I, I'm about that mess. I, I, like, I, I like to kick it off right. <laughs> okay. You know, we got the Southland Conference this year. Obviously, you and know last time they was in the um, they won the Southland it was back in 2017, right before you, you know you came on board. Um, but we looking yeah. for some big time expectations from from the Pirates this year. Obviously, you know this year I think the tournament you know ended up with um, Texas A and M Corpus Christi mm -hmm. and, and my the Lions down there in, in Hammond. <laughs> um, yeah. So, <laughs> so what kind of expectations can we expect from the U and O? Um, Team this year, and obviously y'all trying to win. Y'all trying to win the tie Southland this year, and take the, and take y'all next take that next step. Or what we're looking forward to, down in you know. Well, you know, uh, based off you know what we did last year, I mean, we led the led the regular season. We were number one in the conference, conference. the whole regular season until the last day of the season. Um, so you know, we got a little bad taste in our mouth, and we're definitely looking forward to being making a run for the conference title again this year. Uh, we're excited about the bunch that we have, and we definitely feel like we have the group to make that run again. Um, you know, the other teams, the, the conference will look a little different this year with adding Lamar back and yep. then keeping in Cardinal right. Word from going to the WAC, yep. adding Texas A&M Commerce. Yep. Uh, so, you know, we're excited about all of that. But at the end of the day, you know, we load up to try and win the title every single year. Coach, uh I was at that the Southland Championship, you know, when y'all played at Nichols. I'm talking about an environment that I don't think I've seen, you know, when you talk about Nichols and you and know in some years. Uh, then you had two big-time players with Ty Gordon and, and Santa Lil. Uh Just talk about losing a player of Santa Claus, Santa Lil's, uh caliber, man, and, and trying to, right. you know, get somebody to replace that scoring, that leadership. And just a, a, a big time impact player like that going into this year, man. Um, I mean, you can't replace Derek St. Hilaire. I mean, he had a special year. I mean, you know, when you talk about a guy being top fifteen in the country and scoring, and that's that's just, you, those don't fall off of trees. Right. So, uh, Facts. Facts. Uh, I mean, you know, him and Troy Green both. I mean, that's two first team All Conference guys that we had. I mean, it's, no one player is going to step in here and replace those guys' production. But I think with this team, we have a, a deeper roster mm -hmm. and we have a lot more. I think we'll be a much more balanced attack across the board with this group here that we have this year. So uh, that's why, where we're excited at. And I think also this group that we have will probably will shoot it from deep better than any group we've had since I've been here. So uh, we're definitely excited about that. But I mean, watching what Derek was able to do last year, it was special. Yep. I mean, it was a lot of nights where we were able to hand him the ball and you know, he took care of a lot of W's for us. Right. So uh, we, we're definitely thankful for him. I mean, it's, it's funny. He just sent me a post. Uh, he playing down in the, the pro-am at the AEBL. Mm -hmm. He's on the MVP list. And it's him and Montrezl Harrell and Paul Millsap. Paul Millsap. Yeah, and Paul two Millsap. other pros, you know. And, I mean, for him to be on that list already, I mean, that's crazy. Yep. It just also talks to the spe level of special that he was for us. But but take me back to the Southland Conference Championship at Nichols. When him and Ty was just kind of going back and forth, Forward. I mean, what, what, as an assistant coach, I know you know you won't win the game, but did the fan come out of you just watching two high level right. players just right. go at it like that throughout the game? I mean, you know, we knew, we knew for those two guys. I mean, not taking away anything from anybody else, but those two guys were looking at each other to be the favorites for player of the year all yep. season long. Yep. And I mean, both of those guys had special years and. Sitting there watching, I mean, I talked to Coach Clunch at the uh, at Mall Monday's coaching clinic a couple months back, mm -hmm. and Coach Clunch said he called the timeout after Derek made a couple <laughs> shots and Troy made a couple shots and told his staff, "Hey, look, let me just tell y'all right now, 
It's not about to be what we about any X's and O's we drawing up. It's gonna be our best players versus their yeah. best yep. players, and whoever gets it done is gonna get it done tonight. And Ty Ty had a hell of a game that game. And, you know, hats off to him. But I mean, both of those guys, him and Derek. I mean, it was special to watch those guys. If, hell, it was it was hell on wheels to prepare for Ty Gardner. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. But, but it was definitely special to watch what both of those guys did last season. I believe if y'all win that game, which y'all y'all damn so could have won that game. I mean, it could have went either way. If yeah. y'all win that game, I think Derek St. Alev wins Southland Player of the Year. Yeah, I think whoever won that game that night, the yeah. Player of the Year was going to be decided off who won the conference. Yeah, because I mean, I mean, you look at the numbers. I mean, they, it was they were both as even as you would have seen anyone across the country. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, but, but but talk about the fan, you know, in you, coach. You've been coaching basketball for some time now. I mean, you even you even coach you the head coach at the high school ranks. But talk about <laughs> your, you know, talk about your progression to getting to the stage that you're at now as a coach. Because a lot of people get into coaching thinking that is this going to manifest itself? Or I'm finally here. I'm a coach now. Or I'm a head coach. Everything just is going to be all right. Talk about your road to getting to where you are as a as an assistant coach that you know now. Uh, I mean, and G's heard me tell this story before. I mean, yeah. it's. It's, it's very unconventional mm-hmm. um, compared to others. Um, I mean, I was a, a college dropout at UL Lafayette. Mm-hmm. And I, when I was, my son was born when I was 22 years old. Um, I ended up getting involved at Como High School as a as a volunteer uh, volunteer assistant there mm-hmm. um, for Coach Rob Malone. So he gave me an opportunity. And I had no idea what I was getting into. But, I mean, I loved, loved the sport. Right. So, you know, getting involved and helping there. I mean, I was fortunate to do it for eight years over there at Como right. High. Uh, and then Coach Larry Cardero gave me an opportunity to help him start the program at LSU Alexandria. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had three hell of a years there together. Uh, and that, you know, the success we had there opened the door for me to become the head coach at Wiley College. Wiley College. Uh, to, um, I had two really good years at Wiley College. was fortunate to be named uh, Red River uh, Red River Conference Coach of the Year. Uh, we won a bunch of games. We broke some records at Wiley that had been there for some years. And then my relationship with Coach Schlesinger from my high school coaching days uh, opened this opportunity for me to come join him on his staff. And it's been four years of fun with him. So I mean, I'm very <laughs> thankful to be in the position that I'm in. I mean, I'm starting year 17. I can't even think about it, man. Right, it's been right. That's what I'm already. saying. Like the the journey um, of becoming a coach in in in, 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 in basketball or in football. We talked to a lot of coaches, and every coaching journey is, is unconventional. It's different, but man, it's been trials and tribulations to get to where you are. Yep. And everybody road is starts off a little different, but man, it's it's just a blessing to hear the stories, man. Because the stories is what matters. Yeah. 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 Nah, I mean, it's, it's, it's been a, a wild ride. And, I mean, you know, I met G, you know, I'm coaching AAU with Louisiana Elite. Um, you know, some of those guys that I've coached that started with them, I mean, those guys have graduated from college now and, and gone on into life and wow. playing professional basketball and yep. seeing those guys grow up that fast has been crazy. Um, one of the guys that I coach is now an assistant coach up at Henderson State, Jeff Jones Jr. Yep. So, right? yep. Like yep. seeing him grow up that fast <laughs> is crazy to me. That's right. crazy. So, I mean, yeah. So I you mean, gave him, you gave him his first opportunity. Yeah, he, he was a student assistant for me at Wild. Yep. yep. I mean, he's a brilliant young young co- head coach in the major. Yep. Uh, I mean, he's been, you know, his dad obviously has won a ton of state titles in the state of Louisiana already and was working on more. And then Jeff was able to help contribute to that as a player and a coach on his dad's staff as well. So, you know, uh, seeing what he's doing, is, it's it's amazing. It's amazing. I mean, yeah. just, Amazing. Looking back on it, like I say, I mean, it's gone very fast. But when you look at what all has taken place, it's, 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 I'm blessed. I can say that. Right. I, I won't take it back though, man. Before, you know, the Louisiana Elite days when you was coaching on on the Under Armour circuit, I won't go all the way back to when you went to UL with me and you. When I come down there on the weekends, we'll be in bourgeois hooping, and then after we finish hooping, we arguing about. <laughs> who be, who the best in the league or certain teams or certain college players or whatever for hours, right? But yes. one thing I've always respected Please about – tell me you're a Rockets fan. Well, go ahead. He know I'm a Rockets fan. No. He know that. He know that. <laughs> he know that. He's a – listen, he's a LeBron James hater fan. We're going to get into that. We're going to get it. 
that's what? another time for another day. But <laughs> but <laughs> but what I want to get into know all my Laker gear was there in the closet <laughs> until 2025. <laughs> You're a Kobe fan like you. <laughs> I, I knew I liked coach. Yeah, 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 yeah. KB. Yeah. Mama but, life. Mama life. But what I want to get Absolutely. into <laughs> what I want to get into is, man, just going all the way back to, you know, 2004, 2005 when I met you. The passion and the gym rat in you, and just the the grind of of, of your, your your personality when it comes to the game of basketball has always made a big impression on me. Um, I mean, just going all the way, all the way back to that. You are a true basketball historian. Uh, you are one of those guys that if me and you talk about basketball, we are gonna be on the phone about two or three hours. We gotta we gotta end up ending the conversation like, look, G, or look, look, Bug. You know, everybody calls him Bug. <laughs> Everybody don't know that name. Mm-hmm. But we got to get on the phone because we've been on the phone for two or three hours just talking about the game. The game. And you How different it is. Yeah. And this was before he yeah. even became coach. a coach. And that's one thing I've always, always respected about you. But, man, G, just talk about the grind, man. You know, a lot of coaches I talked to that's in high school are inspiring young kids that want to be a coach one day. They don't understand the grind and, and, and just – being in the gym and being one of those guys that's mentors to kids that you've been you've been doing that since high school since your come old days. Um just talk about that 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 process, man, that journey and, and and that you don't even look at this like a job. You really look at this like it's really a hobby for you every day and you enjoy going to work, putting that work in and putting that grind in every day. Yeah, I mean, I tell people all the time, man, we could be doing a whole lot of different things, but I'm blessed because every day I wake up, at some point I get to walk in the gym. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, right. my job is I go to a gym at the end of the day. Right. right. No matter what else I do, at some point in that day, I'm going to a gym. Yeah, so, gym's closed down I mean, here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, I mean, that's that's a blessing in itself. Um, you know, just the process. I mean, people ask, you know, how many hours you put in a day. I mean, as cliche as this may sound, but, I mean, the job is from the time you wake up until the time you go to sleep. Right. Uh, I mean, just being there, having relationships with your kids, because at the end of the day, none of this works if you don't have relationships with the players that you coach. Yep. And having relation, you and you better have a relationship with them outside of the gym. If the only time they see you is in the gym for practice, then you don't have a real relationship with them. So you know whether that's going to see them at their apartment, going by the cafeteria and, and sitting down with them, having lunch or dinner with them. Right. Um, you know, walking through on campus, you know, when they just hanging in the in the quad or whatever it may be, you know, you have to be able to connect with them somewhere else besides on the basketball court. And when they see you invested into them in that regard, um, they play a little bit harder for you on the yeah, basketball correct. court. Yeah. They see that you're a normal person. Um so I mean the grind of this man is I tell people all the time, you know, if you want to get into it, you know, you better be very invested into putting a whole lot of time into it every single day. Um, and that's just dealing with your team. That's not even talking about um, having relationships with other people in the business, having time to talk to other people to pick their brain on things, the amount of hours that you have to put on the phone recruiting. Right. Uh, you know, uh, plus, I mean, when it's all said and done, you still have to have your family life. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yep. Oh, and then yeah. when all that's when it's all when all that's done, do you still have to watch film and figure yeah. out how to get better? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. So it, it's a right. it's an all day investment. Um, but you know if you're if you're true to it and, and you put that time into it, you know you'll find success in it. But you better be willing to put that time into it if you want to be successful. At it. But but Jay, where where does that passion come from? Like what where did that? Stem from like in your childhood was it somebody that 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 kind of like inspired you coming up? What is that passion and that and that mentality come from? Though? Uh, just from being around my older brother. Um, I mean, we were always playing some sport growing up, but I mean, I picked up a lot of my knowledge from him. You know, we didn't have this internet to log into to figure out who the right. best players were. Right. You know, we looked forward to uh, reading the Advocate. Uh, yep. Getting the parade magazine to look up and see who the All Americans were and see right. who the best players yep. were. Time's picking you uh, down here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, if we were lucky to, you know, if we were lucky to get a Street and Smith's magazine, we were able to look and see who the top 100 players were. Yep. You know, we we look forward to, you know, getting 
that the the only time you were going to see players from all over the country was on the McDonald's All American game. So we look forward to seeing that. So I mean, just being around my older brother, man, he was a he's a sports junkie, and just being with him all the time, I mean, it rubbed off on me uh, to the point where he thinks I've finally exceeded him with my with how much I love this stuff. But uh, I mean, it just it came from him, man. Just being fortunate to have a brother that was you know in the household with me that you know put the ball in my hand got my passion for playing the game and then just wanting to learn everything about it from him um that that was where it all started at and then when I branched out uh my high school coach Toby Saints here that's the head coach at Livonia High School you know he was the one who told me I'd be a coach now when I was hooping I did not want to hear that right you know of course you hooping you competitive with all that Diminishing but, uh, my abilities. Yeah. <laughs> right. I already know. Come but, on. I played uh, high school basketball. I played JV until I broke my ankle. Listen, you can't tell me all this stuff, though. <laughs> I don't want to hear none of it. But I, yeah. I mean, you know, I went to UL Lafayette believing I can go make the squad and, and join that group. And Coach Evans had a hell of a group down there that went to the NCAA tournament three times in five years. And I was trying to be a walk on and. You know, Toby Saints was like, hey, man, I just really believe your knowledge. You'll be a coach one day. Now, at 19, I didn't want to hear any of that. No. Right. <laughs> but uh, I, I get who knows, three years later, three years later, I ended up becoming a coach. So, I mean, everything happens for a reason. I agree with that. But listen, Coach, let's, my last question for you is this. Like I said, I'm, I'm petty. I can't <laughs> let it go. It's, it's just in me. It's in me. I, it's competitive pettiness. But yeah. just as a fan, looking at the game at the pro level, I know you, you say you're a fan of the Lakers, but you're not a fan of the Lakers now because Bron's there. <laughs> you think about this yes. extension. And they gave him $97 million. Oh, man, why are you about to get this man started? Why not? Satisfied as, with the extension I, or you just like, oh, my God, I got to keep my merchandise. I, I got to keep my merchandise in retirement for two more years. Oh, man. All my stuff will stay boxed up in my <laughs> closet. <laughs> Is down in the bottom of my closet. It will stay there until that guy does not wear a Laker uniform anymore. <laughs> so you, so do you call? Do you consider the the twenty twenty the the, the what that is the bubble year? Do you consider that a real championship for the Lakers, or is it just like what's the word we were looking for? Uh, asterisk. Asterisk. You have an asterisk, asterisk by. I mean, I don't put an asterisk by because I mean I think for them guys to to leave their homes and, and go live in a bubble for two to three months the way they did. They live in the Disney world. Ain't that, it ain't, that, ain't that bad living. <laughs> Disney it, it wasn't. Now, everything was shut down. Yeah, it, everything shut down and they put you in a, in a spot where you, you know, you're out of the comfort of your home. Yeah. You know, even in the, you know, during the season, you get, you at some point you get to go back home. Yeah. True, true. So for them guys to do what they did, I mean, and they play high level basketball. Now, Correct. you know, they were fortunate to have a, a two and a half month break before they went there. So that I think that helped them out a lot as well. But, I mean, I, I don't put an asterisk by it. They won that one. Oh. Oh. I, I got to keep this in the archives. Call it, Coach. <laughs> I got to keep this in the archives. I, I, he actually gave LeBron James a little credit. I don't think I ever heard you do that. I mean, man, I'm, it's I'm, not very much that I've ever said credit-wise. But, I mean, <laughs> at the end of the day, it's – He's, he's, he's coming to an end, so yeah, we, gotta, we gotta appreciate him while he's here. He's coming to an end, so we gotta appreciate him. Coach don't here. like the king. He don't like him, man. Uh, my, my last question for you, Jay, man, before I let you go, um, man, just talk about uh, where you see the state of basketball as it well, high school basketball, um, as it as it pertains to today. Uh, I feel like. Years ago, uh, kids were tougher. Um, I feel like kids were more students of the game. Uh, I feel like uh, kids were in the gym more. Um, what, what, what's, your, what's your thought process and, and where are you at with it when it pertains to kids in high school and, and how they're developing? And uh, why it just seems like kids are just not tough anymore? And when, when, uh, adversity strikes They're ready to run To another situation And then run to another situation um, Why do you, Why do you think that is? Yeah. Um, I mean there's multiple reasons um, I feel like when we were coming up um, You know 
we we played in the park or we played in the gym with older guys and and older guys held us accountable yep uh, you know they weren't afraid to tell us what our deficiencies were and if you didn't work on those deficiencies you weren't going to get on the floor with them um so but it was a certain level of toughness that we got from that because those guys, you know, they were bigger than us. They were stronger than us. They pointed out everything that we couldn't do mm-hmm. and made us have to play to those things in order to be successful against them. Um, kids nowadays have a little bit, they have too many outs. Um, the other part is I think they just, they play so much basketball because mm-hmm. it's nonstop that, I don't think they ever really get time to slow down and, and be assessed as much as, as back in the day. Because, you know, for us, I mean, you play season didn't start till October. Right. And then once the season ended in March, if you were lucky, you were on the AAU team somewhere. Right, right. And not everybody played AAU. Now yeah. you can go get for the AAU team. For real, for real. It, it wasn't as many, no. as many teams back then. No. It wasn't that many teams. And then, you know, if your high school was fortunate to play in the summer league, uh, yep. you know, you might have got – you know, 10 games in in that summer league. Whereas now these high school kids, you know, they're playing 30 games in the season. Yep. They're playing 40 games in the summer. League. They're playing 25-plus games in the AAU. So, like, when do they ever stop? So, when they do have that downtime, it's like, you know, I want to just be a kid sometimes because they play so much basketball. Um, you know, so it's a, it's a different it's a different dynamic for these kids nowadays because of how much they play that at some point they got to find a balance and actually slow down and be a kid. Now for us, we're like, you got to be in the gym, you got to be in the gym, but sometimes you, they got to step away from it a little bit to help to appreciate it more because I feel like these kids play so much that it's the losing never sits on you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They got to, they got, they, they, they're trying to enjoy puberty coach. I understand. <laughs> you're trying to get their puberty yeah. in. We no, have puberty. I mean, you know, you play the AAU game. I mean, I lose at 1230, but I got another one at three. Right, right. You know, whereas for us, you know, we play summer league and you lose on Wednesday, you ain't get another game till next Wednesday. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, got, right. I got ten. I got seven days to go enjoy some puberty. Call girl. She yeah. Doing. <laughs> yeah. Get so I mean, you know, and I'm sitting at loss. I'm sitting on that loss, and I'm thinking about what what I did wrong and what do I need to get better. And right. you know, for these guys, it's, it's never any slowdown. It's constant. It's nonstop. You know, as soon as the season over, I mean, the day after they finish their playoff game, they're in AAU practice. Yep. You know, so, I mean, these kids, it's just a different dynamic. It's not their fault. It's just, I mean, it's helped them because I think it's a lot of these kids are much more skilled than, you know, with guys from the past. Right. But, you know, it's a gift and a curse as well. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> when you when you and Coach Sless are recruiting a high school kid, um, what are some of the the deal breakers when it comes to I right, he could play, but we wouldn't take that kid because X, Y, and Z? Well, the first thing is going to be how tough is it? Because in our program, I mean, we do things differently. I mean, kids have to be able to, one, uh, are they tough enough to wake up and practice every day at 6.15 in the morning? I mean... So you know, the first thing that coaches go look for is, you know, how tough is that kid mentally and physically, you know. Right. Um, and then the other part, the other deal breaker would be um, just how is he as a person? Mm-hmm. You know, we know you're talented, but, you know, how do you interact with your teammates? Like coach is a huge believer in, you know, what type of person you are. Because at the end of the day, he, he, wants, he wants the best players, but he also wants, guys that you know are good on and off the floor guys that can get along with their teammates because you're around the way we do things you're around your teammates so much and you're around us so much so you know we want to deal with people that are going to be able to handle that every day and people that we actually want to be around right because it makes it very tough the amount of time that we put into it day in and day out if you're dealing with you know people that don't have great attitudes or mm-hmm. great personalities, it's just those, those people won't work in our program. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. coach man. Um, uh, you know, I know uh, yeah, y'all got some players on that roster I'm really familiar with. There's no doubt 
that I know y'all going to be one of the top teams in the Southland Conference. Can't wait to see you you guys perform this year. I, I know I'll be in attendance for some of those games. Um, good luck to you and Coach Celeste this season. Good luck to you on your coaching journey, man. I know it's only, it's only a matter of time before you at that head seat again, man. I mean, when that time comes, I'm just thankful that everything I'm doing right now is preparing me to, for whenever that moment comes again. So and, right and, now we, we're blessed and we got a good group and, you know, we're definitely looking to make some noise and trying to get get back to the top of the Southern Conference. And whenever you do get that call to get that head seat, just make sure you let G Sports be the first one to break the store. <laughs> I got you. I got you. <laughs> you and your assistant coach, Jay Smith, man. Appreciate you, dog. No problem, man. Appreciate y'all. Man, appreciate it, man. Listen, there it is, y'all. Coach Jay Smith. That's a real 